Hello, welcome to another cool math video. My name is Ali. Today, we are going to look at a probability problem and use symmetry in an unusual way. All right, let's, let me pull out the problem. It's a past AMC 10 problem. Let's read it first. Tina randomly selects two distinct numbers from the set one up to five and Sergio randomly selects a number from the set one up to 10. The probability that Sergio's number is larger than the sum of the two numbers chosen by Tina is what? So let's first underline the keywords here. Two distinct numbers from this set and Sergio selects a random number from one up to 10. And we want Sergio's number to be larger than the sum of the two numbers by Tina. Okay. You may ask, where's the symmetry here? They don't select the numbers from the same interval. And we have a sum of two numbers here. We have just one number here. Where is the symmetry? Well, the answer is there is no symmetry, at least not yet. So we'll develop, we'll change it a little bit to get a symmetry. So first let's set up our unknowns. Let's say Tina's numbers are T1 and T2 and their sum is T, and Sergio's number is S. So the range for T is, the smallest is three, and the biggest we can get is nine, four plus five. And S is from one up to 10. Now they are not the same interval, right? And we don't, I mean, there's symmetry in S, but this, do we have symmetry in T? Let's see, I had seen this before, maybe not the distinct numbers, but if you roll a die twice and get the sum, right? Then the distribution is, is gonna be between two and 12 and it's gonna be symmetric around seven, right? The number of cases for two more than seven, nine, is gonna be the same as the number of cases for two less than seven, five. So there's, probability, the, the probability of five and nine are the same. There's symmetry for the probability distribution around seven. And here we have the same case. There's only one case to get three, one plus two. There's also one case to get nine, four plus five, right? So three and nine have the same number of cases or the same probabilities. And the same way you can check that four and eight, five and seven have the same, uh, they appear wise, they get the same probability. So it's the distribution for T is symmetric around six. How do you use that? We still have S that's not in that range. We can make it in that range if we deal with the other cases separately. So let's divide into three cases. S could be one or two. S could be 10. Or S could be from three up to nine in the symmetric range we want, which is most of the cases. Okay, so S, when S is one or two, and since Sergio is picking up his number randomly, the chance of this happening is two tenths, then his number, the probability that S is gonna be bigger than T is none, right? Because T is always at least three. And if S is 10 with probability one tenth, then the chance for S bigger than T is one. It's always gonna be bigger than T. And for this interval, and there are seven numbers left now. So seven out of 10 cases, the chance that S is gonna be bigger than T. Now this probability, now we have the symmetry. So we expect half the time S bigger than T, half the time is to be which will be smaller than T, except they could be the same, right? So other than the cases where they are the same, it should be half the time S bigger than T. Now, how do you find the probability that they are the same? So T is a little bit more complicated, but Sergio is simple. He's a simple guy. He picks a number randomly from one up to 10 in this, case randomly from three up to nine, right? So whatever Tina's sum is, whatever T is, what is the chance that S is 
that particular t. No matter what t is, if t is 3, the chance that Sergio picks 3 is 1 out of 7. If t is 6, the chance that Sergio picks 6 is 1 out of 7. In this particular case I'm talking about, when we restrict the Sergio's numbers to 3 to 9. So always it's going to be 1 7 chance, whatever t is, 1 7 chance Sergio's number is going to be the same as t. And then in the remaining cases, half the time, Sergio's number is going to be strictly bigger, half the time it's going to be strictly smaller. So this is our probability. And then it remains to just multiply these with their initial chances and add them. So 2 out of 10 times the probability is 0, 1 out of 10 times the probability is 1, and 7 out of 10 times the probability is, what is this number? 6 sevens over 2, so 3 sevens. The probability is 3 sevens. Then we get 1 tenth plus another 3 tenths, so that's 4 tenths, which is same as 2 fifths. Yay, it's in the choices. All right, so if we didn't see the symmetric solution, how could we approach it? So let's say this is the symmetric, nice, cool solution. The standard solution does case work on, based on, we can, we can check, there are two ways. Either, either you can pick Sergio's number and see what's the probability that Tina's sum is gonna be bigger than or smaller than that and do case work based on that. Or you can pick Tina's sum and see what's the chance that Sergio's number is bigger than that. So you have to do, it's like double case work for both T and S. So you have to fix one of them first and then deal with the other and, and change those. So uh, you, you, you could do S equals, uh, let's just try with T. So T equals three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If T is three, the chance of T being three is one out of 10. And then in these chances, what's the chance that Sergio's number is bigger than three, that's seven out of 10. If Tina's sum is four with probably two out of 10, wait, it's still one out of 10 because they are distinct, right? One and three. So one out of 10 times, then Sergio's number bigger than four is six out of 10. Five, one, four, two, three. So there are two possibilities to get five out of five, choose two, 10 cases. And then you see Sergio's probabilities decrease as Tina's sum increase, right? That makes sense. And then for T equals six, one, five, two, four, still two possibilities. And this is decreased to four out of 10 now. Seven, hmm, two, five, three, four, two possibilities. And then eight, how well, do you get eight? Three and five, that's it. One tenth, two tenths, and then nine, only one way. And then Sergio's number has to be 10. So you'd, you'd have to, express this sum and then, you know, multiply and add them. And it, you should get 40 out of, I'm cheating here, copying from the answer, but you should get 40 out of 100. All the denominators are 100. The numerators should add up to 40. It's pretty long, but you can see the symmetry for Tina's sum here. The distribution is, you know, around the ends, one tenth, one tenth, and then another one tenth, one tenth, and then two tenth, two tenths, and then at the middle, it's another two tenths. All right, so that's the that's how you can tweak a problem, even if it's not symmetric at the beginning, and deal with the unsymmetric cases separately, and then uh, use the symmetry, exploit the symmetry in a probability problem. Hope you enjoyed it. For me, more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, that was much better than before. Good, good.